Today I have three rustic fall DIYs using transfers and water slide decal paper. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. I'm going to show you the two products that I'm going to try. There's water slide paper and it comes in a big pack with 20 sheets in there. All your directions are in there and I'm going to post the directions down in the description box so be sure you check that out. Also going to have a discount code in there for you if you're interested and I think you will be after you see this video. And I'm just pointing out what's in the package for this one. Of course you're going to need an inkjet printer and some type of a sealer spray. Choose your pictures that you want to print out and then print them out accordingly. Project number one, we're going to use this bottle cap to make a very cute piece of fall decor. I'm going to use my little spray bottle with water and some scissors. I'm going to grab my paper towels and I'm following my directions. I'm going to add some water. This is room temperature water. I'm going to put it in this pan and place my decal down in the water. It's still on the paper backing and that's how you want it. You just place it down in there and you don't, it's going to roll up when you put it in the water. You don't have to stretch it out. I'm going to do three times the speed to show you that it will uncurl on its own. And when it does, when you get ready to take it out of the water, you'll know that it's ready because it begins to slip off the paper when you touch it. And you can see when I pull it out what I'm doing. Testing to see if it's ready and see how it slides on the backing so it's perfect. Now you need to work with a wet surface, so I'm just putting some of that sprinkled water down, rubbing it on. Then you're gonna grab it between your thumb and your fingers. Start to slide it a little bit, hold it in place, which is what I'm doing. And you're going to carefully pull the paper from underneath it. Oh, it came out perfectly. Yes. Now there are bubbles and water under there and that is normal and you will see that it does come out. So I'm just pressing the wrinkles away like that with my fingers. I'm going to unfold the little edge that I curled under. I was unsure at first of how strong that layer was going to be, but I was able to move it around quite a bit. So I was impressed by that. I didn't tear it or pull anything loose. So holding it in place, I'm just using the same technique I would if I was doing um, like a decoupage or if I was doing a glue stick and putting down something, holding it and then wiping away from the center so that the water will push outward and then I'm kind of patting it down. Be sure you take your tag off of your items and that's just a Dollar Tree cap there, bottle cap. Look how perfect that is. You can barely even see the edges. It even overlaps nicely. All right, I'm gonna give that a chance to dry. And then we're gonna embellish the sign. So far, so good. You can choose whatever type of ribbons you wanna use, or maybe some jute, maybe some raffia, something like that. You could just use twine if you wanted. But I want to do a little messy bow so I'm just going to be cutting some six inch pieces three times of those ribbons that you can see there I chose. I'm going to use some of this Excelsior or Raffia or whatever you want to call this. Looks like hay to me. I'm going to pull it in half, put some on the bottom, and just start making X's across my stack. We're just stacking these up, putting different patterns and colors together but these all coordinate nicely with the sign so these are the ones I chose none of these have wire it is not important for this I'm going to take the other half of that bundle that I separated put it on the top so it all the ribbon is sandwiched in between these two layers of rustic looking looks like hay I'm gonna pinch it in the middle pull my piece of jute around and then try to get it in the center and tie it down tightly. I'm going to put a knot in here because I don't want it to come loose and it's a very bulky type of bow so it needs to be secured nicely. I'm going to just hold the ends and then trim up all the excess that's hanging off as you can see me doing there and then just begin to fluff it out. 
If you have not subscribed to my channel, we would love to have you here. I have a big YouTube family. It's growing every day and I'm so appreciative. And I love doing budget friendly DIYs and rustic type projects. So this is another one of my fall projects and I will have a link where you can see everything I've done so far this year for fall. So just tie that onto the strap and there you go. What do you think about that? So far, so good. I'm really liking this product so far. And this is not a paid video. I'm not getting paid. They did send me the, pro the products to try though. So, so far, so good. Okay? Be sure to follow me on my social media, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. On to number two. I'm going to take a Dollar Tree jar sign. I'm gonna use the opposite sign side of the sign and I'm just going to take the stickers off and then use some sandpaper to smooth it out and it will remove that adhesive so it doesn't leave a dark mark once we try to paint it. Cleaning up the dust. Now I'm going to make a lighter color gray paint. I'm just going to add a little bit of acrylic paint here that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby and some scoops with the paintbrush of this white chalk paint that I've had forever and have gotten so much use from. I'm going to make a probably a medium shade of gray, maybe light, and I'm going to just apply it down all over this jar. Once it is dry, we're going to start sanding the edges. This is going to make it look more rustic and give it a worn aged look. So I'm going all around my edges. This is a heavy grit sandpaper and then wipe the dust away. This is how it looks. And then this printable, since I'm, I printed out several and wasn't really sure which ones I was going to use, but I decided I like this one. The background is a sort of gray, so I thought maybe it would blend better on my gray jar. Very pretty. Now you'll see this on the front and back because when I first got the printer out, I haven't used it in a very long time and I needed to test out to make sure that my ink was loaded and ready to go. So I printed it on the back side just to test it. But you don't have to worry about that. You won't have all that on yours. It didn't affect the front where I actually have the decal. All right, so I did put some sealer on top of this after it dried and uh, the jar so that I would have a nice smooth surface to pull my slide off on. And then same process here, I'm gonna pitch it between my fingers and my thumb, center it down before you pull it all the way off, and then I'm just gonna place it down. When you put the water underneath, that's gonna allow you to slide this around a little bit. Um, it is tougher than it looks, but I wouldn't wanna press my luck and tear anything, so just be gentle when you do it. And then same process, I'm just using my paper towel and I'm pushing the water from the inside where the harvest word is and then pressing it toward the outsides of my sign. Just like that. Very pretty, very, very pretty. I love this, I love the look. Super easy to do also. Okay, now to just make this jar look a little bit more realistic, I'm gonna put a lid on the jar and I'm just going to use the full strength gray paint that I already had from that bottle that I used and I'm trying to not go over the spot so I don't have to sand it again so I want to leave that rustic looking worn edge there that's why I'm taking my time and then while the paint is still damp I'm going to take a little white on a finer brush and just make some little lines along in there um, to kind of represent the the twists that are in the jar rings uh, naturally so you can kind of see it's a little highlight there. So you, it looks more realistic. I mean, as far as representative of my idea of rustic, I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? Now I'm gonna add some twine underneath the bottom ring there. You can see what this jar was now because this is the front. Feel free to paint that or cover it with whatever you choose to make it look nicer. These type of items for me go against a wall. No one ever sees them or they go in my china cabinet so no one sees the back. But you can certainly finish that off. So a couple of loops with that jute and I'm going to hot glue it down and then trim it off. You can use anything you want. You could use raffia here if you wanted to. I think that would be 
really pretty. Raffia, raffia, whichever one. But I'm gonna show you what I'll use. So this bow came off of another, another Dollar Tree item that I bought that I removed. I can't even tell you which one it was. Maybe a little pumpkin, not sure. But I'm just gonna make it look a little bit better by fluffing it out. They always come flat. So I'm just gonna fluff it and then I'm gonna cut the little tails on a slant and we're gonna use it here. I think it looks great. There is potential for sure in Dollar Tree things. Now this is a satin ribbon that also came from Dollar Tree. This isn't seasonal, but you can choose whatever type of ribbon you want. And I'm just gonna do a double bow. So I'm gonna put this satin bow up there on top of my little, my little burlap or whatever kind of ribbon that is up there. It's gonna go right on top. I think the colors look great together. Look at that, isn't that pretty? Then I'm gonna cut slants here. This is gonna be pretty much the same size as the bow that's in the back. It's just gonna be layered. It's gonna give it a little more dimension, a little more frou-frou. So you could stop with one bow, or you could do two bows, or hey, you could do it like me and add some greenery. So I just took a stray leaf that I had laying around. This is just a little, came off of a garland, I think. And then a couple little picks that I had left over. I'm just gonna start trimming down to see how much I need to use. Cut a piece here and there off. We can make more than one leaf out of that same leaf. And I'm gonna layer it with some of the seeded grass. Is that what that is, seeded grass? I'm not sure what this is. Seed pods of some sort, or berries of some sort. I'm gonna tuck those under the bow. It's gonna give it some more dimension on top. And I think that it matches what's going on in our decal. Our beautiful little decal, which is staying in place perfectly with no problem and no wrinkling. I definitely like this paper. And hey, be sure, I mean, you if you want to go and save a little bit of money, look at the look in the description box and get that link and go try this. This it's really good. And there are a lot of people who've done reviews on it that I believe are just as happy with it. I never knew such a thing existed until I was approached. Do you like this one? You like the first one or this one better? Okay, wait till you see this one. Now we're gonna use the fabric one. We're gonna try this on a napkin. So it's gonna be a pumpkin dinner napkin. I printed a couple of things off. I happen to have gotten these two uh, illustrations from Canva. I do use Canva for my thumbnails and for other things. So I'm going to cut out this beautiful watercolor pumpkin and I'm gonna apply it to this napkin. One side of the paper is white, one side of the paper has sort of a grid on the back and you can tell the difference on which is which. So you're gonna pull it apart just like so. It's got a sticky back, not very sticky though but just has a little tack to it. You're gonna put your grease-free paper on top and then I'm going to use my little heat press. This is another item that I've been checking out lately. Loving it. And then, voila, there we go. Now, I don't know if I left the heat on too long or what happened, but I'm very happy. You can see the print right through. It's very soft, it's very flexible. I'm showing you here that it is flexible. It is not a stiff, stiff um, piece that we've added. You can see here, it doesn't bleed through the back. Very nice. Okay, so to make our napkin look extra special, it's cool to the touch and we are going to fold it like we would if we were setting our table. So it's folded over. I'm gonna take a little scrap of jute. I'm gonna give it a couple of knots to hold it in place. Then we're gonna add a little bit of greenery. So this is some bittersweet and a little stem of leaves. You can use whatever you like here. Just pull that down right underneath the loops of that jute. Isn't that cute? 
That's pretty. That's rustic. That screams rustic Thanksgiving to me. What do you think? So my opinion on these products, I really love them. I will be using the rest of them. I will probably order more. And I do have a Cricut. So, you know, I'm considering diversifying the types of things I use. I want all the items, all the crafting products. I hope you check it out. I thank you so much for watching and hanging in there with me with my videos for this fall. And I will see you again soon. Bye!